Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICU module. In today's training, we'll be doing asset accounting. Table of content, overview on fixed assets, integration with other modules, configuration steps, and unit testing. Now, overview on fixed assets. Fixed asset is an important sub-module of SAP FI module. It manages and monitor tangible fixed assets. Real-time integration with multiple modules. Fulfills every country's legal requirement which varies from country to country. Minimizes time, energy and cost for any company. In broad, asset accounting module in SAP is a very important module. The main purpose of the asset accounting is to extract values of the fixed assets owned by the company on a particular date. The valuation may be for internal purposes or external purposes. Asset accounting manage and monitor fixed assets for any organization by way of assets master records in SAP system. It also treat it is also treated as a sub ledger of financial accounting that is SAP FI CO FI module just like accounts payable and receivables. However, to cover all legal and accounting requirements, it is necessary to define some organizational elements. SAP gives us the functionality in asset module of managing depreciation assets parallel accounting to various reporting requirements that is local reporting like US CAP, parent company reporting, tax reporting, IFRS reporting and so on. Assets accounting component is intended for international use in many countries. Irrespective of the nature of the industry, this means for example that no country is specific valuation rules are hard coded in the SAP software system. The software can be configured or can be customized as per the country to country specific values and rules. You give this component its country specific and company specific character with the customization settings. To minimize the time and energy involved in customizing, country specific defaults are provided in the standard system wherever possible by the SAP itself in its own default software. Moving on, there are different types of assets. As you can see, there are tangible assets, intangible assets, assets under construction, low value assets, lease assets. Tangible assets, assets having a physical existence, such as cash, equipment, or real estate. Accounts receivable are also usually considered as a tangible asset for accounting purpose. Intangible asset. You can manage intangible assets such as patents, goodwill, the same as tangible assets in the SAP system. There are no special system functions for handling the needs of intangible assets. So the intangible assets or the tangible assets are managed in the same way. Assets under construction, they are used usually displayed as a separate balance sheet item. Therefore needs a separate account determination in their asset class that we will discuss about when we'll be discussing about the asset under construction in detail. Low value assets, 
these are fully depreciated in the year of purchases or in the period of acquisition these are a low valued which may be around uh, hardly thousand dollars or so and these kind of an assets are hundred percent depreciated within the same year that is why they are termed as low value assets leased assets leased assets create special accounting requirements for the leasee during the term of lease the leased assets remain the property of the lesser or the manufacturer now moving on the more interesting part integration in sap system as said the asset accounting module is very much tightly integrated with all the different other modules in sap system it's a real time integration with general ledger apart from that it is also integrated with material management module production planning accounts payable accounts receivable cost accounting plant maintenance as a result of the integration in the sap r3 system assets accounting transfers data directly to or from other systems the other systems could be a third party system as well and those third party system can even be integrated with the asset accounting sap system as well now as said it can also be integrated with other modules as we can see the material management or the production planning components are posted directly to asset accounting so it's a real time direct integration when an asset is purchased or produced in house you can directly post the invoice receipt or the goods receipt and or the withdrawal from the warehouse in the asset accounting the asset accounting can post directly to an asset and a customer account if an asset is sold so it can be directly integrated with the accounts receivable where the assets are sold to a customer so as we make any transaction for a sale of asset in account receivable that is ar a direct real time entry gets floated in the asset accounting as well accounts payable can directly post to an asset <coughs> and a vendor account if the vendor issue invoice is not posted under management management module so it basically means that when an asset is purchased it is purchased on credit from a vendor and whenever a purchase of asset is done the same thing can be directly booked in the asset accounting when the vendor invoice is booked in the system so again this is integrated with accounts payable you can pass on depreciation and interest to cost accounting that is controlling module in order to track the expenses cost center wise or the profit center wise even internal orders within the co can be used to collect and control capital expenditure so to cover all those cost and expenditures and for cost and expenditures reporting controlling or cost accounting module is integrated with assets accounting the a plant maintenance module can settle maintenance activities that require capitalization to assets so these are different modules which are directly integrated with assets accounting and it depends upon business to business how many modules out of these has to be used and has to be integrated with the asset accounting part now moving on to the configuration steps that we will be doing the above are the different it's a long list because asset accounting itself is a is a big module which involves a lot of things and a lot of processes in itself as a result of which the configuration steps are even larger compared to other other sub modules in fi as of now 
Now these are the basic configuration steps, the minimum configuration steps which had to be done in the system so as to be able to run or use the asset accounting module. Even there are certain advanced configuration steps that we will be looking after once we will be we will be done with the basic configuration steps for executing or for running the asset accounting. So these are the uh, various configuration steps. Copy reference chart of depreciation. Assign input tax indicator for non-taxable acquisition. Assign chart of depreciation to company code. Specify account determination. Create screen layout rules. Define number range intervals. Defining asset classes. Creating GL accounts and assigning the GL accounts for asset accounting module. Determine depreciation area in asset class. Specify depreciation type for posting of depreciation. Specify intervals and posting rules. Then define depreciation methods and maintain depreciation keys. These are the bare minimum configurations which had to be done so as to make asset accounting module executable in the system. Now moving on to the one by one configuration steps. The first is copy reference chart of depreciation. The reference chart of depreciation manage various legal requirements for the depreciation and valuation of asset. It is basically the part of asset organizational structure in which we define a chart of depreciation and ultimately we assign that chart of depreciation to the asset to the company code. Now moving on to the chart of depreciation in detail. A chart of depreciation is a list of depreciation areas arranged according to the business and legal requirements. The chart of depreciation enables you to manage all rules for the valuation of assets in a particular country. Chart of depreciation are used in order to manage various legal requirements for depreciation and valuation of assets. These chart of depreciations are usually country specific and are defined independently of the other organizational units. A chart of depreciation can be used for all the company codes in a given country. So you can have a single chart of depreciation for all the company codes within the same country or even if you want you can have separate as well. In general a chart of depreciation is set up for each country and used by all the company codes associated with that particular country. So for configuring a chart of depreciation one should copy an existing chart of depreciation and then create one for your own company code. Now even SAP supplies country specific charts of depreciation in which different depreciation areas have been fully maintained. That is why we say that we shall take a default specific chart of depreciation and we shall copy that and use it for our own company code. Now moving on further in the chart of depreciation as it is a very important part of asset accounting. The various features of charts of depreciation are first it is a directory of depreciation areas organized according to the business management requirements. So in this you can have different depreciation areas as per the different accounting principles and the rules to be followed. Second, the characteristics and the significance of individual depreciation area is defined in each chart of depreciation. A depreciation area is always assigned to only one chart of depreciation. So you cannot assign the same depreciation area to more than one chart of depreciation. 
then depreciation third part third feature depreciation keys for automatic calculation of depreciation are also defined in the chart of depreciation they are based on the element for calculation that is the calculation method the period controls and all which we will be doing on a later while fourth there are a specific objective objects in the chart of depreciation for special calculation of asset values so this chart of depreciation is a very important part it's the same thing like the general ledger account has a chart of account in the similar way the asset accounting has the chart of depreciation just like in the general ledger account the chart of account retain it all the informations related to the general ledger accounts similarly the chart of depreciation contains all the details related to the depreciation areas depreciation keys how the calculation of depreciation will take place and all that is why it has a very importance uh, of its own in asset accounting so each company code is to be assigned to one chart of depreciation you cannot assign it to more than one the minimum one has to be assigned so now moving on to this particular first configuration step as you can see the path the menu path has been defined to you and we need to create the chart of depreciation over here the transaction code is also been provided that is ec08 let's move on to the sap system and starting the configuration for asset accounting so we need to go to the transaction spro so now moving on to the sap reference img as per the path we need to go to img then to financial accounting new then to asset accounting so financial accounting new assets accounting In asset accounting we need to go to organizational structure then copy reference chart of depreciation so organizational structure so as you can see we went to spro then to img screen then to financial accounting new then asset accounting then organization structure and then now copy reference chart of depreciation so for this to create a chart of depreciation we need to go to execute the copy reference chart of depreciation so double click on or click on to this execute option over here and you can see now the options have been given there are three options one is to copy reference chart of depreciation second is to specify third is to copy and delete so as said that when we create a chart of depreciation we copy an existing chart of depreciation and we rename for our new chart of depreciation so we will be copying one and we'll be creating our own chart of depreciation for the for our company code so double click on copy reference chart of depreciation on this double click on this and you can now see that this is a blank screen because you will not find any new options over here there is no option of new entries because you cannot create your own chart of depreciation you need to copy one so for that you need to go to this copy click on to this copy option over here copy object organizational object now when i clicked on to this it will take you to it gives you a screen from and to so from which chart of depreciation you want to copy to the chart of depreciation so for from which i want to copy i need to go for the options so let's take the list of options in this and we search for a favorable chart of depreciation which will be applicable for united states so you can see there are different sample chart of depreciation these all sample chart of depreciation are by default from sap in this in this particular sap software by the sap company itself so 
you can copy your respective one like for United States of America I will be copying this sample chart of depreciation USA if you will be uh, creating chart of depreciation for other country you can take that particular country's sample chart of depreciation and copy that so I will be taking this one US double click on this and now I will be creating my own chart of depreciation and now I give my chart of depreciation as the same as my company code that is 1200 so that I will be uh, easy for me to remember that my company code is uh, code is the same and the same number is for the chart of depreciation as well so now I can go and I can click on to the continue option over here so when I click on to the continue this particular screen comes up to you transport number range and addresses so what it does is it copy all the settings from that particular chart of depreciation to the new chart of depreciation which we are calculating so need to continue so that it allows and get it copied all the data from that so do you really want to transport the number ranges yes so you can see on this particular over here everything has been copied and now these all changes will go and will get saved to this request this request is termed as the transport request so click on to the continue part you can see the things are getting copied over here on the below so now you can see the message chart of depreciation 1 us copied to 1200 and now you can click on to the continue option so this is what the screen comes up to you that means your chart of depreciation has been successfully copied so this is what is the first stage the first configuration step now the first step has been done so now we'll be moving to the next configuration step that is assigning input tax indicator for non-taxable acquisitions so now you need to go back then now you need to close this particular screen that is for this particular option over here cancel and now we can go to the next configuration step that is to assign input tax indicator for non-taxable acquisitions now why we need to do this we need to specify an input indicator or an input tax indicator and output tax indicator the system uses this indicator whenever you post acquisitions that are not subject to tax but which are posted to accounts that are tax relevant we request uh, sorry we require to specify a zero percent tax codes in such cases so wherever there is an acquisition or a sale and there is no taxes are involved but yet the accounts are tax relevant we need to assign a zero percentage tax code as input and output in this particular configuration so that all the uh, transactions are allowed in the system now for example if there is any acquisition from in-house production so for in-house production acquisitions there is no tax codes involved so but yet you need a tax code so as to process the transactions that is why we need a zero percentage tax in this so we will be going on to this to define a zero percent tax so the path is again uh, financial accounting new financial accounting global setting then the taxes on sales and purchases so let's move over here close this asset move to financial accounting global setting then tax on sales and purchases in that you need to go to posting and then to assign taxes so we'll go to this posting over here and then we'll go to assign tax code for non-taxable transactions so transactions which are not taxable where no percentage of tax has to be involved so we'll execute this So as you can see in this particular company code, 
no tax codes have been assigned in the company code 1200 that is our own company code so we need to assign the tax codes in these two fields one is the input tax and another is the output tax so for input tax you need to search your tax code which has to be assigned over here so you can see we if you remember we have created these tax codes when we we did taxes on sales and purchases so in this we have to assign this tax code that is zero percentage v0 or u0 you can assign so we assign it v0 over here as a zero percentage for input taxes similarly you need to assign it for output taxes as well so in this you can even search for the output tax that is a0 so that is what has been assigned over here v0 and a0 as a zero percent is tax for input and output and now you can go and you can save the screen that means your your customizations have been done in this particular configuration step so the the taxes have been assigned over here so this is the second configuration step that we did we completed now moving on to the third configuration step is to assign the chart of depreciation to the company code so we created the chart of depreciation 1200 by copying the one of the sample chart of depreciation of United States of America so we need to assign that particular chart of account sorry chart of depreciation to the company code so that the linkage between the chart of depreciation and company code can be established and that can be used for the company code in the asset accounting module so for assigning that we need to go to the financial accounting new then to asset accounting and then to the organizational structure so let's uh, go back to the configuration step so we need to close this over here the configurations so over here in financial accounting then we need to go to the asset accounting open it then we need to go to the organizational structure so we can open that and over here you can see earlier we went to this particular step for creating the chart of depreciation now for assigning the chart of depreciation we need to go to the very next one that is assigning chart of depreciation to the company code so we'll move over here and we'll execute this particular step so in this you can search your company code it can be easily seen visible over here or otherwise you could have searched with the position tab tab as well you can put the company code 1200 enter so that is what you can see on the very first row it has been displayed to you so the company code is 1200 now you need to put the chart of depreciation over here which we have created which we will be using for the asset accounting so the chart of depreciation we created we can search again that with this uh, tab and it will provide you the list of all the chart of depreciation and in that you can search your own chart of depreciation which we just created so in this you can search where it is so So you can search your chart of depreciation that is 1200 is over here which we created so you can select that and that has been selected over here and now we can save it so the chart of depreciation has been assigned with the company code okay there is a message error message over here inconsistency between if i code 1200 and that means we need to take some other chart of depreciation okay so again we can save the assignment save and now we can see the it's allow you to save with the options so the error was because of uh, some other inconsistencies in that case we can go back and process the same steps again and the system will allow you to process it so now we can go to continue and now your assignment with the company code has been done so your chart of depreciation 1200 has been assigned to the company code 1200 no problem so now going back 
so the 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 one thing we didn't did is we didn't change the description of the chart of depreciation so if you want to change the description you can go back again to the same particular configuration step the first step that is copy reference chart of depreciation over here and now over here you can you can go back and specify the description of chart of depreciation <coughs> so you can click onto this double click and over here you want you can change the description over here so over here as a sample I can take the sample off because it's no more a sample for me for my company it is in it is a, a chart of depreciation which will be used practically so what I did is I renamed my 1200 chart of depreciation as chart of depreciation and I can put the company code over here 1200 so that it can be easily identified that this particular chart of depreciation is for the company code 1200 so that is what you can do you can change the description while coming up to the specify description for chart of depreciation so that's what the data has been saved the description have been changed so we created we copied one chart of depreciation with copy reference chart of depreciation we changed the description with specify chart of depreciation specified description of chart of depreciation so once you're done you can close this tab over here and then we move to this and we assign the chart of depreciation to the company code so this is what the third configuration step been completed so this is the path otherwise we can use the transaction code directly as well which is OAOB so as to reach to there directly without delay without path but I would prefer to go with the path because you cannot remember all the transaction codes in one go it will take time to you but the path is something which you can easily learn and you could find it out uh, easily when you would be working in the SAP system so moving to the next configuration step now is to specify the account determination account determination links the asset class or the asset master records to the general ledger account so all the assets which will be posted in the asset accounting this account determination link that particular assets to the general ledger account so that whatever the values get posted in that particular assets get automatically posted in that particular general ledger account as well that is why it is a real-time integration with general ledger so as you do any posting in any asset in the asset accounting that particular value gets automatically posted to your ledger account as well but this is done on the basis of this account determination because in account determination we assign the accounts which will be which will be impacting real time to the ledger accounts so account determination key defines the accounts in financial accounting that should be posted during the asset transactions for each chart of account and depreciation area defined as an automatic posting area in the chart of depreciation so these accounts which are assigned to these assets are automatic that is why they get real-time impact to the ledger account as well so in this we will be creating different keys for account determination and later on we will be assigning the accounts or the ledger account so as to have a real-time or automatic integration with the general ledger account as well so moving on to the account determination configuration step we need to first go to the SAP system for the path as mentioned so usually you need at least the same number of account determination as you have the asset assets balance it accounts in the general ledger so let's move on to configure the account determination in the system so the path over here is asset accounting organizational structure and asset class and under asset class it is a specify account determination so moving on to the asset class over here and you can see there is an option of a specify account determination and in this you need to go to this execute option 
so it's a simple configuration step you don't have to do much in it so what we will be doing is you can see these are the standard SAP provided account determinations which are there on your screen but what we will be doing is we will be creating our own different account determinations so what we will be doing is we will move to new entries so I will be taking different account determinations over here like uh, I will be taking 9100 as land similarly I would be having 9200 as building so these are different asset classes like land building machinery vehicle furniture these different blocks are termed as asset class in SAP system so you should not get confused what is an SAP and uh, what is an asset class in the SAP system we'll be discussing that in detail uh, what is all asset class is all about but basically the asset blocks the fixed asset blocks are basically referred to as asset class in the SAP system so we'll be taking 9300 as plant and machinery similarly you can take 9400 as vehicles 9500 as furniture and fixtures 9600 as what else you can take it as is hardware and 9700 as asset under construction so this is what uh, the different account determination keys I have created you can see these are different keys for account determination which I have created and these will be assigned to the different blocks of assets which we will be creating in a while uh, in next couple of configuration steps and these are the different heads in which different ledger account will be assigned so that their respective ledger accounts will be impacted when these particular blocks transactions are done so this is how you will need to create your account determination it's a very simple you just need to give the code and the name of the uh, of the key you would be creating but for this mind take a note you need to work it around in your a, a piece of paper or maybe in certain excel files that what are the different account determinations you will be creating and what the what code you will be giving them as a whole so now you can save this particular screen as your account determination is completed so you can continue with this so it has been saved now that means your account determination is done now we can move to the next screen back to the SPRO menu path so we are on the same screen now moving on to the next is the screen layout rules now the screen layout are required to process the information in respect of the assets by the users the screen layout specifies the status of the fields in the asset master record the screen layout determines if the fields are required entry or optional entry or it may be suppressed and all so you can use the standard screen layouts or you can copy a standard screen layout to create your own different layout as well 
So now to explore more on this screen layout, if you remember when we did accounts payable, accounts receivable, in that even we have seen about the the screen layout, how uh, we can make certain fields mandatory, certain fields as optional and uh, um, suppressed as well. The same thing is over here as a screen layout. So if you want so the, which fields to be suppressed, which which fields need to be mandatory over there that is what uh, we we do in this particular configuration step and if you want you can uh, have your own separate screen layout created so what we prefer is we we copy a standard screen layout which is provided by the sap itself and we create a new screen rules for ourselves and we can make changes in that that particular rules as per our requirements so we'll move to this screen now to this configuration step so moving on to the create screen layout rules executing this particular step now you can see there are different fields already in the system and out of these we'll be copying and we'll be creating our own screen layouts for our own system so what we can do is for land we can copy this and we can create for our company code our particular account determination accordingly so what we will be doing is we'll be creating 9100 for land that has been created similarly we'll be creating Okay, drag it upwards now we need to create it for building so we can select building and copy it and we will be creating 9200 for building enter now moving ahead further so what I created earlier I need to go back and have to check that part as well so you can save these two options over here what we need to remember that <coughs> I want to have the same code as I have created in account determination that is uh, 9100 for land 9200 for building so what I can do I can even I have to remember these fields so what I can do I can take this up with me these are the fields which I need to map in the rest of the uh, configurations So these are the different blocks which I will be using and that is why these are the different uh, account determination keys I have defined because I would be needing different ledger accounts to be assigned to these different blocks. So what I will be doing is I will be creating different screen layout rules as well for these different blocks uh, as over here and I, what I want is I want to keep these codes to be similar in all the configuration steps even if you want you can keep it different as well but I am putting it as similar so as to easy to remember and to correlate things so now moving on we have already created land and building now we'll be creating plant and machinery so you can see in this below that uh, 9100 has created as a land and 9200 has been created as building in the screen layout rules so now going back we'll be creating plant and machinery so for plant and machinery we can copy special machinery over here copy this or even you can go back and you can take this as well as well like plant equipment and machinery 1300 and copy and i can name this as 9300 as in the account determination we named it as 9300 over here then we will be 9300 enter so this is what we have created the third now I need to create the vehicle so I will select the vehicle part so vehicle is there select vehicle this is 9400 enter So 9400 has been defined 
now we'll be going for furniture and fixtures then hardware so furniture and fixture is 1310 I can copy this 1310 over here and I can define my as well 9500 as furniture fixture and equipments Equip. okay the space is fixed so it's not allowing you to take the further description so 9500 has been defined as furniture and fixture so you can even rename this over here furniture and fixture enter and you can see it has been added so the number of entries have been copied then again you can drag it upward now the next which is left is your hardware and asset under construction so hardware will be taking up now so for hardware there is no option as of now so what we can do is we can take any other one out of this okay so you can take any of these suppose I take it as uh, low value assets and I create it as 9600 for hardware enter so it has been added 9600 as hardware now the asset under construction so the asset under construction is there or you can take this 4000 selected and this is taken as 97 9800 9700 so enter so these are the all all the heads which have been taken up you can see over here on the screen that these are the different screen layout rules have been defined for master records land building plant and machinery you can even cut this up plant and machinery then we don't need this so then the next is vehicle furniture hardware asset under construction so this is what are the different heads we created for account determination the same we created for screen layout rules for master record now we can save this and your screen layout has been created so this is uh, how you would be creating your screen layout so this is screen layout specifies the status of the fields in the asset master record so we'll see how these will work later on when we will be creating the asset masters you can use this screen layouts to determine if the fields are required entry optional entry fields or if they are suppressed completely as of now as you want so this is how you created it now we can move back to this particular path and we'll move to the next configuration step so now we have done with the screen layout rules we'll move to the next configuration step that is defining the number range intervals so the number range interval controls the number of assets in each class it basically the number of assets means the the number code code number for the assets the asset numbering can be done with the number range over here the number range interval is required for the main asset number for the company code normally we should specify internal number ranges for assets the number range key is then assigned to each of the asset classes so now discussing in detail this basically means that what number you want to give to your assets which will be created so there could be different block of assets as we created for land building and uh, plant and machinery vehicle and what I want is that all these assets blocks created should have a different number code 
which can be easily identified to which it refers to or for a simple segregation as well so what we can do in this number range interval is we can create different number ranges with their different uh, range which will be different from each other and those particular range can be assigned to these particular blocks uh, that is land, building, plant and machinery, or vehicle and furniture, hardware, or AUC assets and accordingly whenever these assets will be created in the asset in the SAP system they will be given that particular number range code in the system so as to identify them easily in the SAP system so how we can move on to that is we need to go to the configuration step again in this case so we can move on to the same screen and over here you can see the very next one is defining number range intervals so over here we will be defining the number range interval executing you need to give the company code 1200 <coughs> now you can see over here as a display part that there is no number range defined as of now for the company code 1200 whatever we will be defining will be defined first so to define the number range we need to go to the interval over here change intervals and now to add the intervals we need to go to this plus interval tab over here we need to click on to this and now we can give the number over here suppose I take it 0 1 and I can give the number to it as 1000210999 then I can add it so what I will be doing is I will be creating different number ranges for different different assets blocks so that each asset block will be having a separate number uh, range of its own so that their identity can be easily identified so plus now in the same way we'll be creating 0 2 similarly I will be creating 0 3 Now in the same way we can add 0, So these are the first seven which we needed as number over here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven blocks that means we needed seven number ranges separately for them. So that is why I have created seven number range. If I would like I would have given the same number range for all as well. So I can use this zero one for all those blocks as well or I can assign them a separate number range both the options are there in the system but I am taking separate number range so that the identity will be separate they can be easily identified to which blocks they belongs to that's why I am taking these number ranges separately for those blocks and this is what should be preferred to have a separate number ranges for all the asset classes so now we can go and we can save this screen and okay and your configuration that is the number range have been defined in the SAP system so now going back onto the path once more so this is what we are done with the number range interval <coughs> now moving next is asset class 
so this is a very important uh, point over here asset class you must have to understand this very 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 clearly that what is it, what it is all about so the asset class is one of the most important criteria for structuring the fixed assets from an accounting point of view asset class means the group of similar assets AUC assets which we'll be discussing later on so you can see the assets class in the diagram involves the account determination the screen layouts number range so for creating an asset class asset class uh, includes the account determination screen layouts and the number range which we have already configured in the last couple of configuration steps so all those configuration steps include will be included and then it will it will give shape to the asset class in the SAP system so the asset class as said is a very critical for a structuring of asset fixed assets every asset has to be assigned to exactly one asset class the asset class is used to assign the assets and their business transactions to the correct general ledger accounts the most important task of assets class are the assignment of default values when creating assets particularly the depreciation terms the grouping of similar asset for reporting purpose by entering the useful default value it reduces the time and effort needed for creating new asset master records it also ensures that the records in a given class are handled uniformly the other criteria for classifying the fixed assets according to the legal and management requirement is to classify them as per the asset classes that is the classification of assets that is the fixed assets as per the blocks so the asset class is refers to the asset blocks in the SAP system so we'll be continuing the asset class in the next training session till then you can practice till now all the configuration steps can go through can configure the system as of now and we'll see you in the next training session thank you